Blog Talk Radio. Hello, Saints. I'm Michael Tivo, Mike Jefferson, TG Pastor and the author of the book, Victory. Welcome to the Tivo Mike Show, the podcast for TV fanatics who love Jesus. I'm here in the studio with my best friend and our entertainment guru, Mike Warner. Hey, guys. This is us, as Chris Sullivan said, by putting these characters in these situations and showing an audience how they navigate that as opposed to just talking about depression. Mm. By demonstrating how two people can navigate this in a healthy fashion or as healthily as they can, I find that to be infinitely more helpful and heartfelt. Wow. We meet child Toby and teenage Toby. Today, we explore how Toby's past defined his future. It's Tuesday, October 30th. Talk about TV just to reveal JC, yeah. Devo Mike. When Kate said to Toby, I'm pregnant. Oh. His reaction got me right in the feels. Yes. Like, and the worst part about it, right? NBC, don't show me no more previews. <laughs> because I knew it was coming. So I'm like, it's, whatever. It's not going to be that big a deal. Right. And and then it happened. It and was. I was with him. And I was like, oh, yes. You're so happy you can't be happy. Right. Right. And... That's hold on. It, it brother just, just said something so ridiculous. I give the tweet. <laughs> Entertainment like, guru <laughs> says stuff that just gets me. He was so happy he couldn't be happy. Ah, man, it just like I just sometimes you. Just, I just want to like, want to oh. take your brain <laughs> and just doggone it, man. Oh. That was the perfect way to explain it, because it was relief, yes. but deep sadness, because it was always there, but he was hiding it. So his j- first time he could be expressing genuineness, what bubbled up was the sadness that was always yeah, there, was, yes. and he oh. had no room to display the happy, oh. and he just look, broke look. down. Yes, and he's going to the uh, sink. And he's saying something, trying to, you know, give himself that verbal talk. Yeah, like talk him off the ledge real quick. Like, all right, God, this is just like, couldn't. Do and she's like, what is going on? Are you all right? I, but I love, I love their relationship. Yeah. I just love I it. I think by the end of this season, you are going to forget that Kate murdered her father. <laughs> because in that scene, she was so what Jack would have been to Rebecca. Yes. Instead of being like, you're not happy with having a baby, right? she automatically went into, oh my God, my husband. Right. Like, are you all right? She went into it like... Uh, uh, it would, because, first of all, showing the flashback yes. of child Toby with his mom going through clearly some postpartum depression, whatever, and he goes to make her smile. He puts on the jacket. Listen, the Rodney he's like, so I was with my wife. We were happy for years. Did we bet? At, and the and funny she, thing is, I yes. knew what actor. So before she said, "Oh my God, are you doing Rodney Dangerfield?" I was like, "Yes, oh, Rodney Dangerfield," because I loved him as a character. So as good. A kid. Yes. Uh, there's a cartoon. Ladybug. He's a dog. Remember that? Ladybug. There's another one. There was yes. a cartoon where he was a dog, and the dog's name was Rover. Oh, that's hilarious. And it had the tie. He got so, no respect. No respect yes. at all. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it just so it was oh. good to see that he had. Um, male comedic role models. Yes, yes. Because you don't get just, and that's off. literally who he modeled his life on. Because just like you see him and his dad, and that relationship was like horrible but good. Yeah, because the dad. See what was good about that scene when <clears throat> when they show Toby that was teenage Toby. Yeah, the father's leaving. Is you wreck. What this show does is I recognize the time in which they lived. Yes. And at that time, seeing therapists, understanding the chemical independ- um, imbalance. imbalance in the brain. And so the husband was truly exasperated. Yeah. And he couldn't get his wife to be happy. You know, And we talked about this on the show before. When men fail at something, we avoid it. And so he thought he was failing as a husband. And so he had to leave. He was yeah. failing as a father because he said it. Like in the rare moment of a of a man telling the honest truth of fear, 
He says to his son, I see so much of your mother in you. It scares me. Yes. Oh. The, these sad attacks, whatever he called them, are unbearable. You're gonna have to, you, you have to navigate through life because this will not fly. And it showed me that Toby didn't have the support he needed. He had to create this this character yes. to get him out from it. And then they fast forward him to the adult Toby after his uh, girlfriend broke up with him. I loved how when that breakup happened, the mom, who had her own bouts with depression, tried and successfully enough got him out of it. Yes. And said, you have all that joy to share. Just go ahead. Yeah. But it's just as real and deep as your depression is. And then he got help, and they showed him all uh, shaved face. I was like, oh, my God, look like a baby. He did, yeah. I mean, a big, fat baby, <laughs> but he looks like a baby. But the the thing that got to me <laughs> was <laughs> what it's like to be depressed, they showed. Yeah. In a way that wasn't what typically is shown of a show. Like normally it's, oh, the depression is I can't get out of the bed and everything is fine. Is, everything is not fine. They end with that. Yeah. They but they showed yeah. the struggle of what it is to overcome and endure. And what I really loved about the episode is when he finally lets her know what was has been going on so they could have this child. Yes. The ultimate sacrifice he made for her. That was another Jack thing he did. Is so Kate has a lot of people willing to kill themselves for her. So once again, Kate, okay. you thought See, by the end of this season do. that I'm going to forget <laughs> that you killed the most jackest Jack. I then can't, no, I can't. she has to really embrace what her husband has done for her. Yes, and definitely. when they go to get back on the medicine, I love how they show it's not a simple. Oh, here's your refill. It's it was we, real. We, we have yeah. to meet with you. We have to now find out. We have to work with you. Find your dosage at this point. Like it didn't show that. Oh, if you're depressed, you go get pills. If you're Correct. depressed, keep hiding it. It's gonna be okay. Uh, that it, it didn't even show that doing what he did is a good idea. Nope. Yeah. Exactly. It showed, but it, it just showed this story. It showed this family, this couple, yeah. and. He's been fighting depression his whole life. He just wants to be happy. He wants to find his happy. Yeah. It's one of the reasons I broke down with um, A Star is Born. They just want to be happy. Mm. So we'll be back right after this. To be a survivor in this amazing race with a need for speed, you need God's grace. And if you're desperate like housewives watching Days of Our Lives, you can't cope without hope, and that's not on a soap. If you look into Oprah or Dr. Phil, you can shop nonstop or pop a pill, but the void won't fill and the pain won't kill till you love the one that hung on the hill. Kicking back in your lazy boy easy chair watching Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Nah, you're not going to find it there. No American Idol or Council Tribal has a final answer that'll satisfy you. CSI ain't got a clue. SVU don't know what to do. Not the ER or the OC, nothing on a CD. TV, DVD, or MP3 can save you and me. CNN's got no good news. Here's a headline. You must choose. It's not a simple life, Paris Hilton. It's treading on thin ice, living in sin. You can be an apprentice for Donald Trump or eat Fear Factor fast food from a dump. You can be a heavy hitter, a Wheel of Fortune winner, a Fox News no-spin spinner, a flat-out sinner. But you better check this life that you're living and make sure your sins are forgiven. I bet you 50 cent Elvis Dunn came and went, and eventually every black-eyed peak went Stefani P. Diddy and Britney, every wannabe on MTV with the icy bling, every Dixie chick that sings. They all going to see the king of kings. I don't care if you're J-Lo or Leno or Bono. One thing you got to know, someday you're going to die, bro. Then where are you going to go? Hey, I'm not talking some punk junk that's irrelevant like your grandma's church from way back when. It's not some preacher feature on TBN that you need to be liking or listening. The real superstar is Jesus Christ. He's the way. He's the truth and the life. One day he's going to split the sky. He's the brightest light and the highest high. So what I came to say and what I'm telling you is don't buy that stupid stuff they be selling you. It's all designed to fill your head and waste your space until you're dead. Here's the bottom line of my rhyme. Give your life to God while there's still time.
Welcome back to the Appropriately Sad Shiva Mike Show today as we talk about depression. The solemn music. Oh, it really like, is. It's I was like, like uh, oh, no. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you, this is our This Is Us like, music each you week. Completely, <laughs> completely obliterated my joke with that music. I was going to say, right? Just like, boom. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It, music sets the tone. Oh, yeah. It really does. And if you listen to a show, like if, or if you watch a, a movie and they have the extra scenes, and you'll like, oh, delete the scenes. And you'll watch it like, how come it looks so different? Because it doesn't have the music underlay. And you see what a big difference a scene is without the music. Or when they do put the music. Right. I'll never forget. Mind you, I'm the movie person. Right. But the one movie that did it for me with music Bro. was Man on Fire. Okay. I remember Man on Fire. Uh, Denzel Washington, Dakota yeah. Fanning. She gets kidnapped by her unbelievable dad named Mark Anthony in the movie. And... <laughs> He you finds her, there? saves her, but he has to sacrifice himself for her. Right. So at the end of the movie, you see him walk into the car. Oh. You already know he's going to die. And they play music, and it's Latin music. Hmm. But it wasn't even about the music itself. For me, being someone who's learning Spanish, the lyrics yes. is what hit me because it was, Una palabra, mm. no dice nada. So one word. Can say nothing. Wow. Al mismo tiempo, con de todo, but at the same time, say everything. Wow. One word can say nothing, and but yet say everything. That hit me, especially wow. when he was walking. And it, there was more to the, the lyrics and stuff. And the song wow. translates to the water on the face of the map. Wow. Or the map. Of, and it's it just like, oh. It just it, it just gets to you. Yeah, it just broke me all the way down. I was like, so like, like the movie was already left. great. Right. It was already powerful. This makes me want to watch the the, the movie again. Oh. Wow, because I don't even remember that song. Or I wouldn't know what they said. Yeah. I'm like, post palabra or whatever. <laughs> like, you know, some crazy thing. Like, oh, he's going to the post office. I don't know. What the <laughs> fuck? Uh, or I would think it means man on fire. Exactly. He's going to catch fire <laughs> on Chicago fire. <laughs> this is what needs to be on Chicago fire. But anyway, that's the I don't know if I can so. take him on Chicago. That. As long as he's not like he was in Fences. Oh, thank you. Too long-winded. <laughs> To everything was a speech. I like if you. That's like that's. I'm yes. telling you, not all the time. Hallelujah. Come on, bliss. Go. Don't need a speech. I need you to say sure. That was fun. Yes. Not why my brain power connected and made it fun and spoke to the lights. So, but Toby and in the Toby push portion of this because that was a major part. Everything else was all right. Whatever. You know, Kevin sees a black dude. Whatever. But Toby, with this. Fighting this battle because it was his episode. Yes. And when they showed what he did to assuage him of that feeling, mm. playing the game all day, missing the appointment with yes. Kate, that look on his face, he was so pre so gone in his mind, but yet so present because of the love he has for for uh, Kate. Yes. And it really oh, spoke to me so about good. Sac what sacrifices. Yes. And. I saw that and I was like, you know what? It's it's real. Like, yeah, because you do those little things to to for the greater good of what your relationship is going to be. Yes, in in hopes that in the best intention. Yes, you really love them. Even when we talked about that last week on how to get away, where the client took on the murder rap for his wife. For his wife. Yeah, and I like these this, these these storylines. Thank you. These storylines are showing us that because it's not saying that's what you do. It's saying this is what this person did. Yeah. And this was their motivator. Yeah. And their motivator wasn't self glory. It wasn't self anything. It was selfless. It was sacrifice. Whether or not it should be done is a completely separate issue. We're showing and yes. sharing the story of this family, yes. what they're doing. Drop your rocks. Just go with the story. Because yeah. we've all done different things and we've done it for Hopefully, good reasons. Yep. You know, some of you did some from bad reasons. Well, like that's like so, and that's, and that's the thing. So I loved because you know that's the Kevin and to I mean the Jack and Toby. Oh my gosh! The thing I loved about this episode was we got Kevin mm. and the Jack and Kevin. So 
we did get some blonde moments, right? The, the lady at the gas station. Right. He was clearly was not though. okay. Thank you. <laughs> with Zoe That's a white privilege moment. Yes. Because oh. he didn't he, he 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 didn't need to be aware of it because that's not his world. Remember, he was too busy talking to her about, hey, we're taking this trip. He was looking down like, oh, so you what have your coupon? You yeah. You're fine. You got the thing. And he was oblivious. She was like, oh, he yeah, he doesn't see it. But I, I think what I love that they're doing this is we're going to get more Randall and Kevin lines or mm. story because now Kevin's going to have a different perspective. Right. From what Randall, because that, let me just say, Niles Fitch, um, young Randall. 15-year-old Randall or 15 Randall. high school okay, Randall. Yes. That scene, brother, I have been in that scene many times. What scene is that? Where you go to date a girl or you're talking to a girl. You've been in that scene where the father comes out and the turns around? like, hold up. Oh, I got it worse because I got the hold up, the aftershock, and then the can I talk to you on the side for a minute. Wow. So, brother. Did you want to see your papers or? He just was not thrilled with the idea of me, my black self, and his white daughter. Wow. So that hurt me. That scene <sighs> crushed me. It crushed me more because it happened on prom night. Right. It crushed me more because the daughter and mom were so accepting and willing to just let it be. And why did he? And why did she still go? Huh? Because her, the father doesn't have to go to the prom. No, but the thing is, it's it's that's the psychological of it, right? So she could have went, but in that moment, had she gone, she'd be forever turned her back on her dad. Mm. For not agreeing with what he brought her. Good. What he, that's how we see it. Yeah. But and it, trust me. But we forget they're only fifteen. Yes, and a few times it's happened in my life. I've seen both sides where the girls like, well, I'm still gonna hang out with him, mm. and what that entails, and the times but the where the brother didn't no even friends. stick with Randall either. That's what's sad. And that's <sighs> enough. But you forget this is all before they had that hug on the floor. Yes. So you're thinking, yes. he has to keep being but a no, jerk in the no, flashback. What I love is I'm seeing brother. now the that's the first time in 36 years you call me brother. Right. Because he didn't call him brother then. Yeah, and, he would say, oh, it's okay. He's my brother. So he's been raised white. He's actually fine. He's not like one of those people from Juice. Yeah. Or <laughs> Boys, Boys in the Hood. Hood or Fat Albert. I can't do it. Too. He's not. He's not a young Cosby. But he's his own man. Yeah. He's Jack's son. It, it, well, see, that's, that's what, what. That's what I love about Kevin. Mm. I finally got Jack's son. So when um. Wait. When did he show himself to be Jack? When Zoe forgot her pillowcase. When she first said it, wasn't that good? When he first said it, he was he like, goes, "Yeah, I thought it meant something." Turn too. around and go get it. Yeah, and you need your silk pillow case. And then whatever happened, I'm assuming he got up to go to the bathroom when he was talking to Mac. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mac was what the guy's name on Night Court or whatever <laughs> show he was on before. But Mr. Robinson, and he overheard the <laughs> snippet because all of a sudden they get back to the hotel and she's like, "Did you you order room service? Oh no, no, that's for you." Yeah, I and got she, you. And she comes in the room. She's like, "A pillowcase." Yeah, so okay. He goes, yeah, it seems really important to you. Yeah, so there you and go. And I was like, but he was still saying like unsurprisingly, but it showed but that he's scared. There's, there's, there's Jack and he remembered, right? Jack is there somewhere because he was like, we're gonna get you that. Yes, yeah. I may not know why you need it. Yeah, I know you want it, and you needed it, or right. it was important to you. Yes. So I was like, oh my gosh, it Jack was such a there. beautiful moment. And I think that's what melted her way to finally say he's worth it. Yeah. Well, let's just start with that conversation before we go to break. Oh my gosh, I loved the whole conversation because I loved it because they had that conversation of boyfriend girlfriend. Like, no, 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 no. Right. And then the black lady, you, Mrs. Robinson, was like, y'all are such a cute couple. I said, right. Oh, we in a couple. Honey, you, you drove five hours in a car. Right, for in a what? car. For what? Yeah. <laughs> to do what? He's your neighbor? What? He gave you jello? Come on now. We know he's not doing your hair. <laughs> oh, so man. why are you together? I love that, cutting through the the crap and getting to yes. the realness. Yes. And that's what allowed her to be real back. Because yeah, she says, well, this is my first alabaster. Yeah. You know, and that man. killed me because I had a cat and yeah. he was all white. <laughs> And I named him Alabaster, so it was even yes. funnier. <laughs> oh. She's like, oh, okay, your first one. Okay, so let's talk. Yeah. And, and she goes, well, I don't want to have to explain it to him or should he. Yes. And she just, goes, but if he's worth, worth it. it. And I was like, thank you. Because what that's the good thing about that answer. Yes. Because she didn't just say yes or no. And, and she didn't judge him for being white. Yes. It wasn't about that. It was about for her does she want to have these conversations? You need to if this, right. if he's worth if it. If he's worth it. Then it's worth educating. Then worth right. Then just bring love him through educating. 
and he'll do it. And he called her real quick as soon as she told him. Oh, yeah. He was like, oh, why did you tell me early? I would have kicked that woman in the face and <laughs> sued her. And, I know, because why did you say something like that? <laughs> he would have. She goes, I didn't know you're worth it until now. This is the Skiba Mike Show. In under 60 seconds, what is the gospel? All right, check. Our God is great and awesome and a mighty God is he. So rich in mercy, he loved us so jealously. Put your hands up if y'all in the house, y'all feeling me. If you don't, I'ma make it clear, so listen please. The triune, three in one, holy trinity, the MVP. There is no other second and none in heavenly. Showered us with grace and kindness so exceedingly that even when we were dead in trespasses, made alive in Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest you should boast. For we are meant to do his good works and much greater. And in accordance we will also glorify our Savior. Jesus Christ, the Messiah, Son of God. Yeshua HaMashiach, Elohim, the Holy One. He became a ransom for many and now the risen Son. So what better way to respond than to lift your hearts in song? Welcome back to the TiVo Mike Show. We're yes. everywhere, wherever we are. I don't have to tell you. You're listening to us already. Radio Public. So just Google tell Play. your friends where you listened. I've iTunes. That's right. And Give hello at you, Mike, and Twitter at, <laughs> yeah, at EG Mike, and Twitter, and, and 84, and Instagram, TiVo Mike, and whatever. Just type TiVo Mike.com. It'll go there. Yeah. We'll just start getting everybody to go to Mike.com. It's yes. one place. Click it everywhere, yeah. and then boom, shuck But now we're on Beth. I know what you were saying about so, Beth. I don't want to watch it. Was so good. Why I do don't we want to watch, watch it? Because Cause the show sucks. No, because I, I not don't in jail. want to see Beth broken. But Kate goes to jail tonight. It doesn't matter. Oh. Beth has been such a, since season one, a <sighs> phenomenal woman. Yes. And, and she's sorry for names. the people out there who want me to say phenomenal black woman. It doesn't matter if she's black. Right. She's been a phenomenal woman. And she's actually white in real life. So her name is Julie Sweeney. I hate you so much. And uh, <laughs> she's Julia Roberts' cousin. It's but beautiful. But they can put it with the, with the makeup. They make can look perfect, black. Yeah. But awesome. she's just been so great as a character <laughs> right. to watch her go from non working mom back to yes. work. And, <sighs> and a real person. And, and that's the thing. Like, the real her, person of her. Yes. Like, every situation, she's been a real person. Meeting her, her husband's biological father, trying to build a relationship. Already, uh, I'll never forget when she. He's like, "Well, I'll just take him." Well, he already upstairs. Why are you gonna take him? So like, <laughs> like, like, it was just like, ah, oh, man. So, to, for her to lose the job, first off, me and that company, um, I sent them some bomb threats. <laughs> just kidding, I didn't do that. Well, not on Team Trump. <laughs> what I'm saying is, right, that company upset me, but we never got her real. Disconnect. Like, we got her disconnect when him telling her you're not worth it. Right. But she never took time to process what that really meant. Right. And how devastating it was to her. And We and saw the hurt in the moment. Yes. But then that interview, and, and, and when she started talking about, well, we started 12 years ago. Right. And we then start, started We hit. started it together. Yes. Like, I was and then I, him. We did the... And so why did you leave? <sighs> well, because what happened, you know, it was a budget decision and... <sighs> Uh, and you could tell right after she said budget decision and paused, she reheard her conversation with him in her mind yep. that you're not worth it. Yes. And it, the pain of that hurt her. Down right there. And and like we said, uh, they would they would have still hired her if she just took her minute and came back. But to be humiliated all over again, self like self done like right. You did it to yourself in that <sighs> moment because you. Automatically replayed that by it unconsciously, and I think the episode is going to show that she got the offer from them, still, yes, and then she's telling them, "I'm not ready." I think that's where the scene's going to go, because they had already made her their decision at I that was point. So hurt. they were just going through like the mechanics, yeah, like this, this is the, who we the, want the protocol, yeah, right. She's great, and because she said they already talked me around, they yeah. introduced me, so I knew she had the job. Yeah, this was the the final. It was just. Like wow, and, of it, you know, yeah. she got emotional. 
She's still going through it. Because, again, you had something for 12 years where you didn't see yourself. Here's the thing, and I hope they explore this in the episode. I know they will because he's a good writer. That she didn't see herself as an employee. Yes. She saw herself as one of the owners. In a yes. sense, you know, like owned her work, her assignment. Her, yeah. You know, like. Her contributions. Right. The company, she's contributing. Yeah. And she's helping. And she saw herself as integral to that. And she goes, well, if 12 years, if that's not the case, then why the why was I let go? Why wasn't I that? Why did they let the other person stay? Mm-hmm. You know, because oh, oh, it's a money thing, because they're paying her less. But still, if I'm bringing more value, it's just one would need to go through this. Yeah, and she never did it. And she, even in that, she was still supporting her husband. When he's giving his speech, she's there. Oh, she my, told him, she we, goes, well, at least they stayed. Can we please talk she about goes, that? She they work here. Who calls people complacent? Well, that's the thing. Well, remember, <laughs> as, 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 when he said it, she, I love she the reaction. Like, like, the whole scene, I'm looking at Beth. Yeah. I'm not even on radio. But she's like waving at him. Like, yes, oh, like, but I'm looking at Beth the whole time yeah. and her reaction because she's in the unique position. She's just like Randall. She, I'm sure she gets the same pushback in the community, yeah. but she's, I guess, more aware because she grew up with her family, mm-hmm. you know, where he had, you know, white families. He always keeps saying her. I, yeah. grew up with white, I know you got the white family and they don't yeah. care. You, blah, blah. Yeah. But when she goes, baby, call him complacent. She's like, yeah, I know. As soon as I said it out of my mouth, I shouldn't have. She goes, yeah, well, that's, that, we'll that's, that's what you're going to get. She goes, and you'll never say it again? Yes. Like, you learned the lesson. She's always about the lesson. And in that moment, she was even, let's move on. Yes. And like, she was trying it. to do that herself. I'm just going to move on. Well, they fired me. Okay, well, I'm going to keep moving on. And when you realize, yes, you can move on, but sometimes you need to take a moment you gotta, you and gotta hurt. The moment. Yes. And just let yourself do that. Well, that's a Mary Jane. And Randall... When he d- did it, that scared her. Yes. So she doesn't do it. Yep. Yes. And she needs that on the floor, cry, get it out, and let your husband step up and be the and one who hugs you. you. He'll be or there. Or Zoe. He'll Zoe probably, goes and gives you a hug. Cradle her around the yes. room. Yes. She's going through like Right. Or he goes and hugs Kevin because Zoe's going to hug you. Some, whatever. But let let someone love on you. There's a there's a let thing on Twitter or Facebook them. that says. When the strong, sometimes the, the hardest thing for the strong to say is, I need help too. Yes. You know, because who's there for you? Mm. Oh, my gosh. Just, we love you. We love the show. We love you, Julie Sweeney. Susan Colucci, what? Oh, I thought it was Julia Sweeney. Anyway, you this Sweeney. is the TiVo Mike Show. I had to get a laugh at that. If you love TV. $405 and Libby. If you love Jesus. We're going to love TiVo Mike. The TiVo Mike Show is a daily internet radio show that features the best of popular culture with a Christian point of view. TiVo Mike teaches you about Jesus and popular TV shows with the entertainment guru, Mike Warner. From The Walking Dead to The Big Bang Theory, you'll experience entertainment that fills your spirit. The TiVo Mike Show airs weekdays at 2 p.m. Eastern on Blog Talk Radio. Or subscribe on iTunes or Google Play. Learn more at TiVoMike.com. That's TiVoMike.com. And real quick, before we go, I want to shout out Miguel, a.k.a. John Hortus, um, for taking up the mantle. We got the scene that I think every fan needed to see with Jack mm-hmm. and Miguel on the couch. Jack filling out life insurance forms. And he said, listen, if, God forbid, I get hit by a bus, right. promise me you take care of them. And it, I actually hated Miguel less. Yes. After seeing that scene. Yeah, I was like, he's doing all the great things. He's stepping up. Fix the fridge. Fixing the fridge. <laughs> which meant so much because, you know, she's renting. So apparently the life insurance wasn't a lot. Just yeah. saying, Jack. Just saying. 
Well, he probably only got it because they probably someone told him to get it. It wasn't right. like a and he didn't, and he didn't do the Dave Ramsey twelve times your income. His dad so didn't, didn't have life insurance, I'm no, sure. No, so. not at all. <laughs> but it's good. But it's okay. Jack don't have to be perfect in all ways. But yeah. everyone else listening to this podcast get twelve times your income. <laughs> And that way they don't have to worry about some guy named Miguel fixing a fridge. And can we talk about how little stereotypical it is? Just saying. All right. So, anywho, remember this, people. I need you to keep listening to the show. If you are facing depression problems, seek help. Please tell somebody. You know, they say if you see something, say something. Well, this one, if you feel something, say something. Mm. You really need to do that. Yes. Because you can't give what you don't have. And you can get it all from Jesus. So follow him daily, not just Sunday. The T Row Mike Show is produced by Michael Jefferson. Our soundboard operator is Mike Warner. And our theme music is by Eric Dano. Special thanks to Sharon Jefferson, Sandra Warner, Matthew Jefferson, Desiree Hidalgo, and Shanika Goodine. That's it for the t Mike Show. I'm Mike Warner. See you tomorrow when we explore redeeming messages drawn from secular TV shows that are worthy of being watched.